Um, you know, I thought I'd start off by just kind of talking maybe for five or ten minutes about my journey and then talk about some lessons learned. Um, I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I would see, you know, my parents tell the story of you know, me being three years old and having my little radio, uh, radio flyer wagon out on the corner trying to sell rocks. And, and, and apparently the only people I could sell rocks to were my neighbors who I guilted into it. Um, you know, but it's funny, I see it when I, I meet with entrepreneurs all day. And you know, you, you, you meet those entrepreneurs, you know, like that kid who in like middle school would go to like Costco and buy candy and then like in bulk and then sell it on the bus. You know, it, like that was me. Um, <laughs> you know, and you meet you, you know, you kind of find people like I, I got my first personal computer back when I was 12 and instantly sort of, you know, started doing computer data entry for, for the companies. You know, I got my first video camera and I'm filming weddings and birthdays and bar mitzvahs. Sort of trying to, you know, you know, but I was born at a really magical time because like while I was, you know, from age 11 to 18, um, the PC era was really becoming, you know, popular at home. Like, you know, I got one of the Commodore 64 pet computers and had one of those 300 baud modems that you like put the phone in and it makes that funky noise. And by the time I graduated, I was running a bulletin board system in my house and it convinced my parents to get multiple phone lines so that people could dial in. Um, came to Penn, I knew I wanted to start companies, so sort of uh, the entrepreneurial program at Penn, even though it was still nascent at the time in 1989, was an attraction. Um, came to Penn and was convinced I wanted to major in or concentrate in entrepreneurial management and picked up marketing along the way. Um, you know, while I was here, I uh, got an internship after my sophomore year that changed my life. Because that internship was at a company called Telegram. They sold business information services. Keep in mind that the web browser wasn't even invented until like 92, 93. So, you know, access to information online was still really specialized thing. You would dial into these business services like LexisNexis had their own phone bank. And, you know, Dialog and Dow Jones had their own phone bank. So here was a company called Telebase and what they wanted to do is build a gateway to all of these different phone banks. So you would dial Telebase and you type in a search and then they would have, you know, so you would be on one phone line call and then they would have five other phone lines that would go out and search LexisNexis and all these other things and then compile the results back to you. And I had a, it was a great summer. And while I was there, I met uh, one of the co-founders of that company, a guy named Marvin Weinberger, who I was working for. And we started brainstorming, wouldn't it be neat if all, the, all these services are for professionals and corporations, wouldn't it be neat if like kids and students could have access to this? So we came up with the idea called, uh, of a product called Homework Helper. And uh, we tried to convince Telebase to pursue it, but they were very busy, busy focused on the, uh, on the business path. So we went out and said, we take the idea and do it ourselves, and they said, sure. So we did that, and it was kind of interesting because here I was going into my junior year starting a company. Um, we didn't have any money, so you know my partner literally mortgaged his house to fund it. I was in a dorm room. I should have returned the house. I couldn't mortgage the fraternity house. <laughs> so we, uh, you know, we started the company, and it took a really long time. It took us three years to raise money for this thing. Um, <coughs> But finally we did, and, and you know, I graduated in 93, and we had maybe 15 employees at the time. And then uh, three years later, we went public on the NASDAQ, because we were at the right time at the right place. Sort of as the web browser and internet, consumer internet sort of emerged, we were there, we cut deals with a service which was, was called Quantum, that changed its name to America Online. Um, uh, Prodigy, CompuServe, to sort of provide the homework helper area on those, on those services. Um, lots of lessons learned there, you know. Um, I was telling the story the other day of their road show when we went public. I flew out, I was doing some of the meetings in New York, flew out with them, we were raising like 40 or 50 million dollars to, you know, and asking people to trust us with this money. And, you know, when I flew out to catch up with my co-founder out west, I needed to rent a car to meet up with them, and I went to Hertz, and I was under 25, and they wouldn't trust me with a car at 25. No. Same thing with Avis. And it was this surreal moment, because you realize you're asking people to trust you with 40, 50 million dollars, yet Hertz wouldn't trust you with a car. Um, you know, so that company went public, and then I left and started uh, a company called Half.com, 
which quickly became the largest marketplace for used books, music, and movies in the world. Um, eBay called us a few months after we launched. If there was ever a month, ever a year to get an acquisition phone call, it would probably be February of 2000, the, the top of the sort of internet boom, because uh, the bubble kind of burst in March. So we were rather be lucky than smart. But I